Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and hello friends um, and happy Monday. So Monday, I had to return back to work from having a blissful week off celebrating my birthday. So welcome back to me. So it is a late night Man Crush Monday. Today's Man Crush. I thought I would go back a little bit into, say, the late 80s and 90s. And today's Man Crush Monday is going to be on Canoe Reeves. So let's start it off. Man Crush Monday, Canoe Reeves. Just a little bit of background on him. He was born September 2nd, 1964. He was actually born in Beirut and then moved to Toronto. His parents, um, on his parents' side, his mom is English. His father is a little more interesting. He, his father is an American. He is um, a native Hawaiian who is also um, Chinese, English, Irish, and Portuguese. His parents divorced in 1966 and his mom had moved them to Sydney. I believe she had gotten married a few times um, and then he spent his time, most of his time, in Toronto. And where does the name come from? Well, he was actually named after his, let's see, he was named after his uncle his uncle, his name, Henry Keanu Reeves, and Keanu means cool breeze over the mountains in Hawaiian. Um, but let's get into some of his, some of his um, movies. Now, there's, he has a ton of them, so I'm not gonna go through every single one. His feature film debut was in the 1986 film Young Blood, um, where he played a a um, goaltender, a, a goaltender for hockey, and he actually in high school, um, he considered playing ice hockey for the Canadian Olympics team, but he changed his mind at 15 when he decided he wanted to be an actor. Thank goodness, because I'm sorry, there are a lot of movies that he was in that would not be the same without him. Um, getting back to 1986, he was in Youngblood. He was also in a low budget film called Flying. Um, the end of the 80s, he was kind of busy. He was in the um, he was in a few teen dramas, which were The Night Before, The Prince of Pennsylvania, and Permanent Record. All of those were teen dramas. He did have a supporting role in Dangerous Liaisons, which I think I think that was with Michelle Pfeiffer. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be. 1989, he was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, <laughs> 1989, he was also in the uh, Ron Howard directed movie, Parenthood. Um, 1990, he was in a couple different movies. He was in I Love You to Death and Tune In Tomorrow. And he was also in the Paula Abdul. He was also in the Paula Abdul um, video. I think it was called Hush Hush. It said Rush Rush. I think it was really called Hush Hush. Either way. Um, he was eye candy in that, and that is the video that proved that um, Paula Abdul, not, not, not that great of a voice. I mean, she had some great, dance, some great dance songs, and she was a great choreographer and dancer, but she was smart for putting him in there because he was eye candy. Um, 1991, he was real busy in 91. He had um, the sequel to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which was... Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. 1991, he starred with River Phoenix in My Own Private Idaho. And that was when he kind of made the transition into adult, more adult, um, more adult roles. Um, 1991, he was also in the iconic Point Break with Patrick Swayze. That was directed by Catherine Bigelow, who, fun fact, Catherine Bigelow became the first woman to ever win an Oscar for director, for best director, and that was for Hurt Locker. Um, 1992, he was in Bram Stoker's Dracula. That was with Winona Ryder um, and Sir Anthony Hopkins. And 1993, he was in Much Ado About Nothing. 
and even cowgirls get the blues and in Little Buddha. Um, 1994 exploded onto the screen with Sandra Bullock in Speed. 1995, he was in A Walk in the Clouds and Johnny Mnemonic, which a lot of people were saying in my, in my research that that was kind of like a precursor to The Matrix. Um, 1996, two movies he was in. He was in Chain Reaction and he was in Feeling Minnesota with Cameron Diaz. Um, it was stated here that also in 1996, he was offered the role um, for Speed 2. He was offered the um, sequel to Speed, which was Speed 2. Um, and he said, no, thank you, despite being offered $12 million. I did not see it, but it just did not sound like a great premise. Like, was it on a boat or something? No, that just doesn't. And I believe it was with... Um, Jason Patrick and Sandra Bullock. I love Sandra Bullock, but come on. On a boat, doesn't make sense. Um, and he had, he had claimed that allegedly his decision to not make that movie um, caused 20th Century Fox to like not work with him for a decade. Um, 1997, he was in The Devil's Advocate with Al Pacino. 1999, he, another big, another big breakout, big movie for him. He played Neo in The Matrix. Um, in 2000, he was, he played opposite against Gene Hackman in The Replacements. And then he played a serial killer in The Watch. And he also had a role in The Gift. 2001, he was in Sweet November with, I don't know how to say her name, Charlize Theron, might be right, might be wrong, and he was also in Hardball. The replacements and Hardball were both, um, were both kind of like sports comedies. Uh, 2003 was a big year for Matrix fans because two sequels came out in, two Matrix movies came, came out in that year. In May, it was um, The Matrix Reloaded. In November, it was Matrix Revolutions. Um, and also in 2003, he starred, he starred with Jack Nicholson, Amanda Peet, and Diane Keaton in Something's Gotta Give. And I gotta tell you, love that movie. If you have never seen it, seriously, seriously he's a younger man who falls in love with Diane Keaton who is an older woman and I'm gonna tell you when she's talking on the phone and he sees her and he sees her there just talking and he gets that look of like hmm I, I could love this woman and he looks at her never nope uh, yeah if that was me and he looked at me like that hell yes turtleneck be damn that's right 2005, he was in Constantine. 2006, he paired up with Sandra Bullock again in The Lake House. I love Sandra Bullock. Didn't look like the greatest of movies, so don't ask me about it. He also co-narrated The Great Morning with Alanis Morissette, which is a docu, um, which was a documentary about climate change mitigation. 2014, yet another role that. Like, who else could, could do this? He starred in John Wick. Um, in 2017, there were two more John Wick movies coming up in 2017. John Wick Chapter 2, 2018. John Wick 3, John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. Um, and 2019, he was the voice of Doc Kaboom in Toy Story 4. 2020, um, he was in Bill and Ted Face the Music. Um, that was released after being in development since 2008. Also in 2020, he was in SpongeBob, the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. He played Tumbleweed. He, he played a Tumbleweed named Sage. And in 2021, he was in The Matrix Resurrections. That was the fourth movie upcoming. He has two more 
John Wick movies coming at us. Chapter 4 will be premiering on March 24th, 2023. As far as his charity work, um, he founded his, his, as far as charity work goes, his sister had battled leukemia. So he had founded a private cancer foundation in response to his, um, to his sister's battle with leukemia. And it aids children's hospitals. It helps um, and aids children's hospitals and provides cancer research. In 2020, he volunteered at Camp Rainbow Gold, which is, um, which is a children's cancer charity in, in Idaho. He's also worked with Sick Kids Foundations. Um, there's, I've read numerous, numerous articles about how he's just been very generous with, with crews that he's worked with on his films. <coughs> and he also donated over a um, million dollars to um, animal rights charities. I believe that I had read um, that he had donated a million dollars to to PETA. So, excellent man. I have to tell you, everything I've heard about him is just amazing. Okay, some interesting facts about Candy Reeves. Um, when he was 19... He moved to Los Angeles, California to pursue acting um, full time. Alice Cooper used to hang out at his house when he was a kid. Um, he almost renamed himself Chuck Spadina um, because that was one of the names that he'd used when he went out on, um, on auditions because he felt that Keanu was just too, too odd and too out there. He almost changed it, yeah, to um, Chuck Spadina. Thank God he didn't because Chuck Spadina just doesn't sound right to me. Um, he has deferred his, his compensation on films three times so that the filmmakers could get the bigger budget and the bigger name co-star. And those three movies, it was the first one was on um, Devil's Advocate, for Al Pacino. Um, next one was Gene Hackman on The Replacements, and the third one was Jack Nicholson for As Good As It Gets. He um, he gave up, I'm not quite sure if he, if he gave up all of his salary or just part of it, but if by any means, he didn't get, he gave up some of his money, if not all of it, so that they could get those three big name stars for the movies. Who does that? No one. Um, he also, there's also, um, there's also a story out there that supposedly he, during the filming of um, Dracula, he may have accidentally married Winona Ryder because the, the priest was a real priest. So there is some talk that he may have accidentally married Winona Ryder. Um, also, when I said he was in the movie, he played a serial killer in The Watcher. He actually begrudgingly took that role because he didn't actually sign a contract. He had said that one of his friends, now presumably now a former friend, had, um, had forged his name his signature on a contract. So he, rather than sue or anything, he was just, he just made it. Wasn't happy about that. Um, and aside from acting, Keanu was also um, the bassist for the band called Dogstar. They were together from 1991 to 2002. And they actually played with some very big name, uh, some very um, big name bands. They played with um, Bon Jovi, Rancid, Weezer, and they toured the US and um, Asia. Also, um, when Keanu was first like dipping his toes into the waters of, of being an actor, um, he lived in rental houses and hotels. He didn't actually buy his first house um, in the Hollywood Hills until 2003. Pretty, pretty interesting. And also in Scotland, you know, you hear all these like film festivals. Well, Keanu Reeves, actually has his own film festival. Because in Scotland, there is a Keanu Con, which is the world's first Keanu Reeves film festival. 
And that started, they started that in 2018 by, scroll, by, by screening 11 Keanu Reeves films. And also lastly, I know, sometimes I think, does this guy ever really age? And there is a conspiracy, and and there is a conspiracy that believes that Keanu Reeves is immortal. Some fans have noted that Keanu looks very similar to um, Paul Monet. It's M-O-U-N-E-T, Paul, Paul Monet, who was a French actor born in 1847. And they claim Keanu never seems to age. Hmm? Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, um, please enjoy the slideshow afterwards of Mr. Keanu Reeves. Um, and if nobody has told you yet today, I love you, you're loved, seen, and heard. Please make sure that you put love, kindness, compassion, hope, acceptance, positivity out there in the universe. I also want to just add out there, fight like hell every day because you don't want to go down without a fight. So everybody have a great day. I love you. You're loved, seen, and heard. Please make sure to treat everybody with kindness. I love you. Bye, guys.